Hello everyone. Welcome to Achievers IAS classes. Let's begin our discussion on the current events of 3rd May 2018. The first issue in news is regarding the recent approval of the Union Cabinet for extending the investment limit as well as the time limit for subscription under the Pradhan Mantri Vaya Vandana Yojana. The PMVVY which was launched by the Finance Ministry is implemented through the Life Insurance Corporation of India to provide social security during old age and protect elderly persons aged 60 years and above against any future fall in their interest income due to uncertain market conditions. The scheme provides an assured pension based on a guaranteed rate of return of 8% per annum for 10 years with an option for the subscriber to opt for pension on a monthly, quarterly, half yearly or annual basis. The difference between the return generated by the LIC and the assured return of 8% per annum would be given by the government of India as a subsidy on an annual basis. From the prelims perspective, we have to remember that the finance ministry has launched the scheme for elderly persons above 60 years of age. With that, let's move on to the next issue, which is an editorial regarding the collections under the goods and tax service regime crossing the 1 lakh crore mark in April, which is the highest recorded tax collection in a single month since the implementation of the GST regime in July 2017. Along with this, separate data released by the ministry suggests that the number of registered tax players filing GST returns has risen from 57% to nearly 63% for the month of March. And the overall tax compliance is now over 96% of the registered tax payers. This is significant because there were fears of high levels of evasion of tax in the initial few months due to less indirect tax collections and the government had estimated that the GST collected should be about 91,000 crore per month to ensure that the revenues lost by the centre as well as the states under the earlier indirect tax system are recovered. Several measures taken by the government like the fresh anti-evasion measures, the introduction of e-way bill to track the movement of goods have helped to plug the leakages to an extent and further simplification of the returns must be carried out to improve compliance. With that, let's move on to the next issue, which is an editorial on the new report from the World Health Organization, which highlights the widespread air pollution in urban India. The report, which has surveyed around 4,300 cities globally, has ranked 14 Indian cities among the 20 most polluted in the world. Some of them include Delhi at number 6, while Kanpur, Faridabad, Varanasi, Gaya and Patna are ranked ahead of it. Despite such poor air quality, Kanpur, Faridabad and several other polluted cities have only one PM 2.5 monitoring station while Delhi has several. Therefore, the WHO researchers had to use alternative data sources such as satellite remote sensing along with ground monitoring stations. The outcome of this exercise makes it clear that air pollution is not a problem of large cities alone and wide variations in data quality exist across the world thereby resulting in an undercount of disease burden and the global death count due to air pollution. The report highlights that in 2016 alone around 4 million people succumbed due to outdoor air pollution while around the same number of people succumbed to dirty cooking fuels such as wood and cow dung and about a third of these deaths occurred in Southeast Asian countries which include India. In spite of all this, the report highlights that the Pradhan Mantri Ujjwala Yojana scheme which provides for subsidized LPG connections for women living below the poverty line will help cut the indoor air pollution which plagues much of rural India. However, it is important to note that rural India has problems beyond just inefficient cookstoves and as the draft National Clean Air Program notes, there are currently no air pollution monitoring stations in rural India which has to be first addressed and practices like insecticide use and crop burning have to be checked to tackle the twin problems of indoor and outdoor pollution. With that, let's look into the next issue which is regarding the recent displeasure expressed by the Supreme Court over the discoloration of Taj Mahal. In this regard, a study conducted in 2014 by various Indian and US researchers argued that particulate matter, carbon from burning biomass, fossil fuels and dust were some of the key culprits 
responsible for the discoloration but conservation is caution that more research is required before implementing any hasty solutions this is because so far there is no convincing evidence to prove whether the discoloration of taj mahal is due to the environmental pollution or due to natural aging with that i wrap up today's news analysis do share this content if you like it thank you for watching have a nice day